welcome to yet another session of biochemistry practicals. In today's session, we look at the effect of pH on enzyme activity. Our enzyme is alkaline phosphatase. Our substrate is paranitrophenyl phosphate. Remember, alkaline phosphatase is a phosphatase, which means that it removes a phosphate. So when our enzymes removes a phosphate from paranitrophenyl phosphate, we get a yellow colored product, paranitrophenol. And it means that we can then measure the activity of the enzyme by measuring the accumulation of the product. And since the product is yellow in color, we can measure the absorbance of the yellow colored product and measure the accumulation of the yellow colored product using a spectrophotometer at the maximum wavelength that measures the yellow color, which is 410 nanometers of wavelength. So we will keep the time constant, we will keep the temperature constant, we will keep the substrate constant, we will keep the concentration of the enzyme constant, and we will vary the pH. Remember, when we vary the pH from 5 to, to 11, for example, as we increase the pH, we are decreasing the excess protons available in solution meaning we are deprotonating the, sol the solution. We are removing protons. When we decrease the pH, it means that we are adding excess protons in the solution, which means we are protonating the molecules that are there in, this, in that solution. And if we protonate alkaline phosphatase, if we decrease the pH, some of the amino acids that are ionizable at the active site will become affected. Histidine, we know is there at the active site. Um, aspartic acid, we, we know is there at the active site. If you protonate the solution, histidine becomes protonated, aspartic acid becomes protonated. When histidine is protonated, it becomes positively charged. When aspartic acid is protonated, it becomes zero charged. It, it becomes COOH. Then if we have the increase in pH, it means we are removing the protons and histidine becomes zero charged. It loses the proton. And aspartic acid loses a proton at the carboxyl group on the side chain, and it becomes negatively charged. So it means that when we vary the pH, we are actually changing the ionizable state of amino acids at the active site. So you want to see at what pH do we get the best activity? What happens when we decrease the pH? What happens when we increase the pH? So we want to see the effect of pH on enzyme activity. These are the materials we will need for our experiment for today. We will need a micropipette to measure our solutions, one mil to three mils. We will need our enzyme, alkaline phosphatase. We will need our substrate, paranitrophenyl phosphate. And we will need to stop the reactions after each 15 minutes using sodium hydroxide. And we will need our different pH buffers from 5 to 11. For each buffer, we'll need a duplicate tube and in the different tube we will not add the enzyme so the difference between the two tubes is that the other duplicate will not have the enzyme and we will use that tube as the blank we'll transfer our solution reaction mixture after incubation to a cuvette and we'll insert our cuvette in a spectrophotometer and we will measure the wavelength using our spectrophotometer after we have read the absorbance using our spectrophotometer. So these are the materials we will need for our experiment. So we will start by adding one mil of each pH buffer solution, pH 5, and then we will move to pH 6, one mil of each, and pH 7, 1 mil in each, pH 8, and each time we'll be having a duplicate, pH 9, pH 10, and our pH 
11. So there we have our buffers. So we'll now add the enzyme at prescribed intervals. Remember, if we start at 2, then it means at 1 plus 2, we add the next one so that they are all at the same incubation time. So at 2 o'clock, we then add at pH 5. And we wait for a minute.
tell our spectrophotometer to we're going to measure it to four ten nanometers of wavelength. And our machine is now set at four ten nanometers of wavelength. And then remember we had duplicates. In the other one we had the enzyme, in the other one we did not have the enzyme. Now we can use the one without the enzyme to measure the absorbance and blank with it. We know that there are some particles of the substrate, according to B.A. Lambert's law, they will absorb some light and we will zero that light out by using the tubes without the enzyme as blanks. So that is where the second duplicated tubes are going to be useful. We would use them as blanks for the tubes that are having the enzyme. So we'll be able to measure the color and we will be blanking for each tube. So we are now blanking for tube number one. And the spectrophotometer should go to zero. There we go. At zero, which is our tube number one without the enzyme. And